Hey, how's it going? My name is Matt. I have this pretty cool tower that I want to show you today that I built using structural engineering theory and architectural engineering theory. It's pretty cool, but uh, I'll explain what I mean. So I built this probably about a year and a half, probably closer to two years ago. Uh, we are in the city of Andia here on Cubed Community in the neighborhood of Monstera. Uh, most of these builds are mine, and I did actually get accepted into an architecture program, not in not a degree, nothing like that, but uh, it was more of a, an introductory prep course by using this design. It is pretty nice here on the ground floor. We do have a little shop, a little pizza shop that I, you know, just kind of threw together. A little kitchen back here. I am using Cube Pack. Uh, link in the description if you are interested. And here you do have the lobby, which obviously work in progress. None of the interior is done yet. I do have the interior partition walls, which are just your non-structural walls, as well as your structural ones as well which is part of your elevator, which in the middle here, you have this thing called a shear wall, which is also attached to this emergency staircase. Now by code here in Canada, you do need two emergency staircases to get out because if you're stuck inside and there's a fire right in front of the staircase, well, how are you gonna get out? Well, you need two staircases. So check out these balconies. I love these balconies so much. They're so cool. So. Yeah, pr pretty cool. This is the bedroom, which I'll, I'll show you in a bit, but you can come out here, you kind of go down here a little bit, and it feels like you're stepping into the city, right? You go here, and then, wow, all the city, and then, you know, you're kind of immersed in it as you step into it. And, I mean, look at this view. This is so cool, but it's pretty cool. So these balconies, they're actually designed to completely shade this window on June 21st at noon to reduce the solar heat gains in the summer. Okay, so I went ahead and changed the time to noon, and I changed the angle between the horizon up to the sun to 50 degrees which is the assumption that i made for this design so if we take a look the angle of the sun comes in crosses here it crosses right here and then look at that imagine that the shadow lines up perfectly that's because there is some math behind it so we use this thing called a solar chart to figure that out now i did mention the term solar heat gains that just means when the sun comes in through a window it's going to heat up your space it's going to get hot sometimes you don't want that especially in the summer and now since the sun during the summer is going to be higher in the sky if you have balconies or overhangs you can design them so that the sun stays out but in the winter your sun is going to be a lot lower in the sky so it may just touch the tip of that skyscraper there and you're going to get sun going all the way through your apartment now similarly if we go all the way down here the balconies do stop but you have these side fins so side fins are used for a similar purpose but uh, a little bit different. So I just changed the time of day to 10 a.m. and you can see that it blocks, whoops, I'm struggling here. You can see that it blocks a little bit more of the sunlight. So you get these little slits of light. If we fly over here, this is the north facade, meaning that this side is never gonna see sunlight throughout the entire year. But related to the large windows, I did design these to be luxury apartments. And I don't know, I thought it was pretty cool. You know, you're standing in here and then check this out. I mean, who, who doesn't wanna look at this view? This is a sweet view. So that's kind of the primary driver behind the size of these windows. But also in the morning, you do get lots of sunlight. So actually let me go inside here and set the time to 7 a.m. So yeah, you get all this nice sunlight, warm you up in the morning, warm up your floors too, your nice hardwood floors, keep, keep your feet nice and toasty. It's exactly what you want. Now that we've had a little chat about sunlight and solar heat gains, I wanna to talk to you about the actual structure and how I use structural engineering to design this building. Take a look at this. This is your elevator. You have your button and then you can go all the way up or down. And then you have this staircase right back here. It's kind of hiding back there. Again, you are supposed to have two, otherwise you will probably die in a fire. This and this elevator, I'm assuming are to be connected through each one of these floors and ceilings to create what we call a shear wall. Now, if I fly all the way to the top, we'll go up and I'll kind of show you what I mean. But essentially a shear wall is the central structural support of a skyscraper. Okay, so you come up to the roof level on your staircase. This is your elevator overrun, which goes on top of your roof, and the elevator is directly below this. So the shear wall, if I could fly up in the right place, would be right below me, right about here. You do also need columns like this as well. If we fly down to this one under construction, this one gives us a pretty good example. And then inside, you do actually see the structural grid. See this, how it lines up? You have the beams in between the columns. And then these are on the inside. And you can kind of see this shear wall here. Now with this building down here, 
It is different than this one because you have the structural elements on the outside. And the reason why I decided to put them on the outside of the building around the perimeter versus inside is because it allows you to have a lot more flexibility with your floor plans. So if we fly into this penthouse here, let's take a look at the floor plan and you can see how there's not actually any structural columns that are sticking out. Here you have the master bedroom and then here's a nice walk-in closet. And then over here you have a bathroom Obviously very much a work in progress. And the reason that I have this wool is because I would like to include a shower here. Yeah, I know it's not very private, but uh, I don't know. I'll add some curtains or maybe not curtains, but you know what I mean? I'll, I'll tint the glass so you can't actually see in. Heading back out into the main area from the master bedroom. This is the main landing area where you come up out of the elevator. Check it out. Pretty cool. Over here, you have a sunroom, which is nice, even though this way is facing north, so you're not going to get sun from here. But in the morning, you're going to get some really nice sun coming from the east here. It's a nice place to enjoy your coffee. But if we go this way, this is the secondary bedroom. It's a lot smaller. Maybe, I don't know, if you have guests or a kid that you don't like that much. Actually, I think the kid would be pretty spoiled. This is actually a pretty decent sized room. And you have, look at this, you have giant windows and you're on a corner. It is beautiful view and there is a park down there too you see that so if we come back out this way check out the final area this is going to be the great room or whatever you want to call it but you can have your living room in here your dining room and your kitchen this penthouse is the only unit in this building with double story ceilings in the main area beautiful 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 i love it so that is the floor plan let's go ahead back up these stairs once again and i want to show you what's on the roof because there is actually a lot of equipment, and yes, it kind of makes sense, I guess. On top, you have these cool spinny thingies right there and there. That is called HVAC equipment, HVAC, where you heat, ventilate, and condition your air. So if you're inside a commercial building or even a large skyscraper, if it's residential, a mid-rise residential, anything like that, you will see these vents where you get your air from. That is all connected to the HVAC system that is typically on the roof. I also have these solar panels known professionally as photovoltaics or PVs. And then if these are facing south, they are going to collect the maximum amount of sunlight possible. If they're facing north, well, they're not going to do a whole lot. So if we take a look down here, okay, that one's more of a flat one. That one doesn't count. I do have other ones down here. See how they are also facing south. So anything in the city, they should for the most part be facing south. But if you are constrained for space, you could also face east or west, depending on the buildings around you too. So say for example, these ones down here, check these out. These ones are not facing south. They are facing east because you have this giant building in the way and these ones here. So I'm guessing if you were to do an analysis on the direction of these solar panels or PV panels, this way would probably be the optimal direction. So now that we've talked about the building performance and building engineering, behind this tower. Let's actually talk about the architecture itself. When you're designing a skyscraper or pretty much any building, it is important to have a distinct base, middle, and top section that are architecturally distinct so you can tell the difference and it makes it look complete. See how nice that looks? Beautiful, great build. When I was designing this, I also took inspiration from Central Park Tower in New York. Now what they do is they have a little cantilevered overhang similar to this one that actually goes over top of another building that is not owned by the same developers. New York City is very well known for this, and I believe Vancouver has it as well, because I have noticed some buildings here that do the same thing. Essentially, the developers of this building will need to buy the air rights of the buildings around it, so that, say for example, you buy the air rights of this one, and they could have built up to here, but they built to here instead. You can buy essentially this air on top and then stack it on top of this one or off to the side of this one as well, assuming you work with these people. And then that will allow you to have some really unique designs. So units 801 through 2501 up at the top, if I counted correctly, are able to have these really cool reading rooms. But unfortunately, these people at the bottom, well, too bad, I don't like them. The architectural design itself is inspired by a building under construction in lower Manhattan that I saw. I don't know the name of it, but I know that it's one of the ones that's kind of sinking into the ground and tilting in one direction. So I 
I'm pretty sure it's still under construction. If you're wondering how I know all this stuff about buildings, building design and everything in between, it's because I have a degree in architectural engineering. It is different than architecture. It's also different than civil engineering. And if you're wondering if a degree in architectural engineering is something that you would be interested in pursuing as a career, join my email list to be notified when my paid video series comes out. It'll talk to you about the differences between architecture, architectural engineering, civil engineering. I'll go through pretty much every single one of my courses in my degree, what you can expect to learn and how it relates to real life. And then I also have a pretty hefty frequently asked question section at the end. This series is not done yet. I am waiting for TikTok to hurry up and fix their stuff. But by signing up for this email list, you can get notified when it does come out. You can also unsubscribe whenever you want. It's up to you. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, click like. If you really like it, click subscribe. But my name's Matt, and you're watching Alpine.